biggest adjustment moving in with your partner? Okay, let's just chat, quarantine chat. So I've got a few questions. I put a Q&A up on Twitter and Instagram and I've got a few questions from you guys and they're really interesting. Okay, if you know that song. Right, okay, so let's just get into the questions because today has been a write-off in fact the whole of this week it's only Tuesday and it's just been a write-off anyway okay so the first question is any regrets from 2019 it's a really good question because I think about it a lot um regrets regrets I tend not to regret things I tend to see things as a learning curve for me so for instance like so yeah anything that i've done in like relationship wise it's all a bit of a learning curve for me so for instance yes my relationships have taught me how to be and like how to help me with this current relationship i'm in um i think the only regrets i have i think the only regrets that i have 2019 is just I just feel like I should have enjoyed the year a bit more like I had my I know I was pregnant and stuff but before that I had like a few months and I was just I don't know I just didn't really chill I just feel like I need to chill a bit and just chill and just trust the process just trust the process because things work out weird and like I feel like I was planning things and things just kind of totally went off track like I got pregnant I mean we've got a baby and then other things have happened so I just feel like I don't want to be so kind of like rigid and and sort of plan things to a T like I just kind of want to be a little bit more free-flowing if that makes sense so yeah that's a that's it that really good question okay um a lot of you sent in the same sort of questions, so I'm just going to go through the ones that are different. <sighs> okay, how do you deal with anxiety, especially in this pandemic? <sighs> really good question. I am like I am not a person to ask. This is not something that I um, do well at. I do suffer with anxiety quite a bit it's been flaring up quite a bit lately but there's kind of things that make sense like there's things that's going on that are gonna flare it up especially with what's going on but like for your question how do I deal with it um I don't know I just kind of wait for it to pass I think um what I try and do for instance right now um, I've actually had a really bad day today because I'll explain but there's like things going on and stuff and I just thought, right, I'm going to put a little bit of makeup on, you know, get dressed and film because it makes me feel better. And I didn't even feel like I wanted to film. So that really helps me speaking to you and social media, watching YouTube, anything that kind of takes my mind away from what's going on. So I've had to deal with a lot of anxiety lately. First of all, with what's going on it's a real big fear and it's just absolutely crazy and i really hope you guys are all safe um especially when you've got children and stuff it's kind of a little bit of mad worry um but i've had anxiety recently because if you've watched if you've been watching me since um like i started in the past few videos i've been explaining that i haven't been very well um after my pregnancy my pregnancy wasn't the greatest <laughs> but after my pregnancy i have had problem after problem um so yeah what it is with me is i i'm a big warrior like for instance my nan bless her heart she's gone now rest in peace but she was the biggest warrior on the planet and she 
got ill from it and like I just need to chill because I worry 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 and I feel like I worry so much that sometimes I bring these problems on like I must do because it's just kind of it's not healthy what's why I keep getting poorly um but yeah I worry a lot and then I get anxiety over it so like I would I don't know like it's anything really especially with this going on like with my health um I'm having a lot of tests and scans and phone calls and waiting for phone calls and, and it builds up anxiety and I'm a kind of person if I don't know what something is then I'll google 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 and get myself worked up like I'm sure all of all of you have done that like everybody does it um but that is one of my next year's resolution is I just, I'm just not gonna do that anymore because I've really worked myself up. Okay, moving on. Um, next question. Do you believe God has a plan? This is a really good question for me right now because it's very close to my heart. Because, for instance, this is how I'm going to think of it. So... I have Graves' disease and I was always told it would be very difficult for you to have a baby. Fair enough. So, I have a baby. Yes, there were problems, but my, my baby is here. Like I thank God every day that I got through all the complications and she's here. Um, but the way I feel is with everything that's going on now, which I'll explain because there is a question about what's going on, um, with everything that's going on with my health now, I feel like it might affect me in having children later. So I feel like I do think that it's true that God has a plan for you. I do, because if you think about it, I don't know if it works for everyone, but this is how I feel. If something happens um, that you are struggling with, something always comes, something happens after that helps you or it's like a change and it's like something's put in front of you to help you with that situation and it's like everything works out in the way it should do like if you're worrying about something like I don't know paying a massive bill for instance for me and like for Liam something always comes along and it's like does he have a plan <laughs> so yeah I do I feel a little bit like that is true let me know what you think about that like what do you guys think about God's plan. God's plan. Do you think you'll carry YouTube on? I enjoy your videos. You're so real. Aw, thank you. Um, I am real. <laughs> I try to be as real as possible on my channel. Like, there's no point in me being like, ooh, ooh, because that's not me. I'm a very... I'm a very shy person. I might not seem it, but I am a shy person. Um, and what's the point in lying? Like... I'm going to tell you that everything that's going on in my life, that's what vlogging is. And I want to look back at it one day and kind of look at myself and go like, oh my god, okay, you went through that, but look at you now. Like, I see everything that, everything has happened, I, I feel like it makes me stronger. Especially with what's going on now, this is just crazy. But, so, will I carry on YouTube? Like, I really want to. I really enjoy it. I think it's really therapeutic for me. I find so much happiness in it, I love watching YouTube, like, especially with what's going on right now, I am just diving into people's channels and YouTube and I just want to find more, because everyone's different and everyone has their own little thing about them and it's just like being with a friend, that's how I see it and that's how I want you guys to see it. I want you to see, like, that I'm relatable and it's like being with a friend, like hanging out. <laughs> Biggest adjustment moving in with your partner? Um, biggest adjustment I don't know you know I don't think I don't think we I don't think I've had to like do much adjusting with him I'm kind of just we are just who we are like we met as them people we are them people um, like we don't really fight, so we never like have to go and stay in different rooms and stuff. We just, I don't know. 
Um, biggest adjustment. Probably cooking. I feel, <laughs> this is embarrassing, especially for my age, but I feel like I should be able to cook better for my age and I'm now a mother and I'm really bad at cooking. I'm not really bad at cooking, but I can only make certain dishes and it usually consists of pasta. <laughs> so it's like spag bowl, um, pasta bake, uh, lasagna and stuff like shepherd's pies and stuff and just the basics really like I can't cook very well so that's probably my biggest adjust adjustment is the fact that when he goes back to work I am gonna have to cook when I'm better so it's like I need to adjust to that I need to learn <laughs> but let me know what your adjustments are down below with your partners Biggest adjustment with your baby, with Olivia. Mmm, interesting. Um, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> like, I've been up since four. She had a feed at four. And I feel great for it. Like, I feel really good. When I get up at, like, ten, it's like... Uh, so, learning to adapt to her schedule understanding like what cries mean if she's hungry if she wants attention whatever it is dummy you know so that kind of thing um and i guess the biggest adjustment is just well i mean nala's sadly gone because of olivia they couldn't stay together it was, would not work so the biggest adjustment is having no dog that's for sure and having a baby because she just takes your whole time up. <laughs> I love her to pieces, but she just takes your whole time up. And I, I would just say the biggest adjustment is sleeping pattern. Yeah. Okay. These questions are really good. Um. Okay. This is uh. This is something I don't even know how to address because is there going to be a baby number two? <laughs> right now, in my mindset, no. Because when I explain to you, like, what... <laughs> when I explain to you what's going on right now, then you'll kind of understand. But I would, me and Liam really want more children, love them. Like, we want, like, three or four, three maybe. But I think it is down to the fact that some people just sail through, some people really don't. So it's it's not even something that I can even answer because it's something that, like, for my health I don't know if it I, I don't know like I really don't know I haven't even had that discussion I, it will probably come in the future but right now it's just not even there's no answer <laughs> okay so this is the big question how's your health okay so the last time I spoke to you guys was basically saying that I'm going for a scan because I if you don't watch me hi I'm Melissa I have had um I had my pregnancy and then when I got to like 20, 20, 23 weeks I got this really bad abdominal pain and um, I had quite a few things with my pregnancy so I had um, obstetric cholestasis, high blood pressure, SPD apparently and just my thyroid, I've got Graves disease and high thyroid, and um, overactive thyroid so, no I haven't, underactive sorry <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was just, I don't even, it was just like a blur, like everything was just a blur, I was just moaning all the time, I was just ill all the time. But anyway, I had Olivia and I came home and I couldn't walk, um, I was in absolute agony. I kept going to the doctors, we thought it was like my hip. I remember saying to my friends and stuff, like my hip is killing, Ugh. and they were like, yeah, you've had a baby, it'll take time to adjust and stuff, so I really trusted that, and, um, I just kept going back to my doctors, three months, nothing, it got so bad, like I was, ugh, like, basically I couldn't look after Olivia, Liam was doing everything, couldn't lift, couldn't do nothing, so 
I was just sleeping, like every day was a blur, like I was just sleeping, taking paracetamol, taking tramadol, like it was just awful. Um, so, what I did is I felt really bad one day and I just felt like, right, something telling me that I need to keep pushing. So what I did was I actually changed my doctor and I said, look, I don't want to see him anymore, I want to see this person. Went to him and he said straight away, I think there's an abscess, go for some blood tests right now, I'm going to take you to the room right now and if there is an infection raised in your blood test then I think it's an abscess. Went to the hospital and it was just absolute craziness. They'd done scans, they'd done blood tests and stuff and yes there was an infection. Turns out that there was a massive infection in my whole body, everything was inflamed, my kidneys, my liver everything whatever's in that part I don't know and um yeah it was it was pretty serious I was on like IVs and stuff um and antibiotics and god knows what else so they found like this sort of mass in my pelvis well in my stomach and they thought maybe my appendix was leaking and there was an abscess or maybe there is just an abscess or something so just before, well, just as the corona started getting really bad, I said, I want to go home. I want to be with my baby. I want to be with my partner. I, I want to go home. Is there any way that I can be tre treated at home? And luckily, they've got these amazing district nurses that come out and they basically come around and, like, I've had, had, ugh, ugh, I had a cannula in my arm and they would just, like, plug it in and I would, like, be on this drip that was hanging from my lamp. <laughs> it was so weird. So I had that for a week, then I went on to all the antibiotics and I really started to feel better, like my back was better, um, I just wasn't as swollen and I can walk. Um, so yeah, so then what happened is they were booked in a scan for me for the 21st, which is today, is it today? I'm losing times and days, yeah, today. And um, that's that. During the time of like kind of waiting up to now, Everything's just got kind of weird. I basically had, when I was really ill, I had this pain, like, well, not pain. It was more like a stretchy feeling. Like, when I was laying down, I felt like I was stretching something and it was sore. So I couldn't lay down and this was on my right hand side. Also, my body was not straight. Like, my body was, like, wrenched to the right. So, like, all this flab, baby fat was all just sort of stuck really strange really weird like i think i broke science the doctors are bizarre like it's crazy um and yeah so all of a sudden like i was just like feeling like my belly and stuff i don't even know what's up probably pulling my leggings up or something i think and i felt this huge hardness like all my baby fat had gone hard on the right hand side and it felt like a lump so obviously I panicked, blah blah blah, rang the hospital, rang the doctors and because of what's going on I just feel so bad for ringing and I feel so bad for needing treatment because of these poor people that are fighting for their lives. It's just really kind of shitty to be ill at this time because it's just, it is, it is, it is it's not exactly life threatening but it is serious because it can spread and it can burst but you know, like, I have to, I have to tell my doctors and I have to get the treatment. Um, but it's just a really bad time because of, oh, it just makes you feel so bad. But anyway, so, had the lump checked out. They said, oh, I don't know, it could be this, could be that, could be that. Went for my scan and they actually brought the scan forward to Sunday, which was really weird. I got a phone call on Sunday and they were like, um, do you want to come in and have your scan? So I did. CT scans come back and... The lump didn't even show. So the lump is nothing serious. However, the everything is still swollen. It's getting there's a little bit of improvement, but it's not as much as they wanted. So everything's still swollen and they do think there's an abscess in my pelvis. But what they're doing is there's some special team um in a hospital called the MDT team and they're sending it to them and they're gonna have a look at it. So there's more anxiety because I've got to wait for them results, which I will find out on Friday. I've actually got to go up there and see them, to, like for them to see me in person and stuff, to, to see like how my walking is and stuff like that because it really affected me. But I'm a lot better, like I'm in a lot better place. And um, today has just been a write-off, like I'm done.
<laughs> I'm just done with today. Today has just been shit, to be honest, because I woke up this morning um, and I thought, right, okay, so I don't have to worry about this lump anymore. It's nothing serious, serious. It's probably a hematoma. This is what they think, a hematoma, like a blood clot thing. And the doctor said it will go lumpy, it will break down, it might be sore, might be itchy. All of them symptoms. Then I woke up this morning and there was these little blisters on it. And I thought to myself, hmm, that's not what he said would happen. And because of what's happened to me, I don't leave nothing now. Like if I see anything, knowing because that infection got so bad because it was left so long because the doctor didn't, <laughs> whatever. Um... I address things straight away now, like, I don't leave it, I don't care, I'm I'm ringing. So, I rang, and he, obviously because of what's going on, he didn't really want me to come in, so I sent him a picture through email, and he looked at it, and he said, uh, so, you're suspecting shingles? I said, yeah, I said, I'm suspecting shingles, because when I was, when I had my thyroid treatment, radio iodine, I was on prednisolone and I got shingles on the back of my leg and I remember it tingled, it was itching and it was bloody sore. Like, I couldn't even have my clothes around it. Oh, it was awful. And that's what this feels like. So, I've had to go and get some antibiotics today. More antibiotics, so no more alcohol again. <laughs> and um, they're now treating me for shingles. So... Like, it's not major, like, honestly, I would, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's nothing, in, in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing, but it's the fact of, like, this happened, then this, then this, then this. So, yeah, I got myself a little worked up and stuff. So, that's why I got myself together and grabbed a glass of, um, I think it's strawberry and peach lemonade, can't remember. It makes me feel like I've got something special, because I can't have wine. Okay, moving on to the next question, because that was just, like, draining, hearing all that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the next thing. Oh, okay, this question I remember. I like this question. How are you and Liam? Right, let's be real here. Anybody that's in a relationship, let's be honest here, if the partner's ill, then it does take a toll. It does take a toll because the poor man has had to deal with looking after Olivia and looking after me. And I am not the best person to be around right now because I'm in a lot of pain. I've been really moody and really sore and, you know, like hugging me is just out of the question. So, yeah, it's took a toll. But he's like, he is like my rock. Like everything I have to do, he will come with me. Obviously, with what's going on, he can't come with me on Friday, and it's it's just really crap. But what can you do? And, um, yeah, he's just been amazing. So we're fine, but when this is all over and when I'm better, I really want to, like, make it special. Like, maybe go on a date or something. I don't know, because I've just been ill for so long. Even through the pregnancy, it's been, like, over a year that I've been a moody bitch because... <laughs> It's just been rough, you know, so even though that person, even though one person is not well, the other person gets affected by it and I can see that, um, so I literally don't like bother him when he just like needs his time, um, and the more better I'm feeling, the more I can do, so I'm starting to like be able to do like getting on the floor with Olivia and just things I couldn't do before and it's, and it's, it's making it easier for him because he has had to do a lot and I mean a lot and I'm so proud of him I am really proud of him he he's the best father to Olivia the best daddy favorite thing about living with Liam that's easy he makes me laugh like easily makes me laugh he does the most stupidest things and my life right now especially in quarantine my life right now is Friday night dinner or what's going on? My life right now is Friday night dinner. I like we love it. I'm living for it. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> Comment down below if you've seen Friday night dinner. It's so funny. Mr. Morris and Jim, so funny. Even Martin, like just, it's just so funny. So we just take things from films and TV shows, and we just laugh about crap all the time. So 
The best thing about living with Liam is, is he just makes me laugh. He does the most stupidest things all the time. Especially since I've been poorly, he tries to like make me laugh a lot. Mm. What's the stick into my phone? Will you... Uh, what? Well, will you ever make merch? <laughs> uh, I would love to, but that's going to be a long time. <laughs> that would be a long way off though. Um, what's your favourite quarantine snack? This is going to sound really daft, but it's probably oranges. Or crispy M&M's, but more oranges. I'm just eating so healthy right now. I don't know why. It's good, but I don't know why. Um, I'm just loving oranges and bananas and mandarins and stuff like that. So my favourite quarantine snack would probably be oranges or... or um, mandarins <laughs> um what have you found hard to find in shops during this time um nappies and not really like major things like eggs and milk and stuff like that and bread it's more yeah nappies and i would say things like tinned beetroot and pasta sauces and just you know the usual kind of stuff where do you buy your clothes well, I've actually just done like a little shop for myself because I've dropped so much weight and I don't fit in anything. This is actually a size 16 and it's huge, it's like a dress. It's really baggy, but I'm wearing something really baggy which is good right now because so it doesn't touch the shingles because freaking hurts, like if anything's touching the blisters and eh, uh, it's horrible. It's really hurting to move. <laughs> um so where do I buy my clothes? I tend to buy my clothes from like me and Olivia me and Olivia we've been buying lately from George Asda and H&M and sometimes at ASOS um, where else do I buy my clothes? it's usually H&M and New Look and Primark <laughs> If they had an online. Um, oh my god. This is... Best thing about pregnancy. Olivia. <laughs> Worst thing about pregnancy. Mm. Probably... Out of all the things. Um... Probably the SPD. Mm, the SPD, where you just really struggle to walk and the pain, it felt like you were kicked in the vagina. Um, did you find a certain lip balm that worked on IG? Ah, oh, yeah, I put up a um, question asking for a lip balm because my lips were like mega dry. Yes, I did. It's this. I don't know why I didn't think of this one. Carmex, I had it and I was just like, I need something that's going to work because my lips are like really bad. This is just the Cherry Carmex Moisturising and it really helps. Like I had like a really bad scab here because I'm just, I constantly pick and I know I shouldn't. Um, have you ever had a paranormal experience? Yes, I have. That can be another video if you want it to be. Do you want it to be? Let me know. What was your first kiss with Liam like and how did you meet? <laughs> um, it was amazing. We met at work um, in a phone shop and we just had like a spark and we just spoke and that was it. I just knew that I wanted him. <laughs> um, yeah and then he, he was giving me lifts home. That sounds really saucy, but that is not like that. He was giving me lists at home, and we was just, like, really, like, getting on, talking, and, like, listening to really cool music and stuff, and it just kind of flowed. Um, and I just felt, like, instant feelings for him, and he did me. Um, and then our first kiss was, I said to him, do you want to come back to, like, mine? My mum was there, um, and we was, like, laying on the bed watching Fools and Horses, and... Uh, we both leaned in at the same time it was amazing it was something like off of a movie it was crazy ah it was amazing did you oh what did how you okay did how you lose your thyroid weight um i 
Ooh. How did I think it's more <sighs> the medication really? I suppose when you first get diagnosed with, I, it, basically I was overactive at first, so I was eating loads of crap, and my metabolism slowed right down. So once I started getting all the medication into me. I started eating normal, so that maybe dropped a bit. Then I had prednisone, and that blew me up, like, <laughs> really bad. Um, but what I was doing was I actually I had a personal trainer, and I went to the gym with her, and um, I was just eating, like, salads all the time and stuff, but I'm not suggesting that's how you do it. What I'm saying is just, like, eat healthy and drink water. I drank loads of water and stuff, Um but to be honest, I feel like it's still there. Like, I still have a bit of double chin action. And that's always been there since my thyroid so started. So, whatever. Does your thyroid affect you still? Um, I would say it does, yeah. Because sometimes you can have really groggy days where, like, I'm really tired and, like, fatigued and stuff. Um, and, like... Sometimes if if the levels go out of whack, my god, it affects me. But if I, you know, keep everything correct and like my levels stable, then usually I'm okay. Like usually I'm fine. Um. So the last two questions: dream vacation. I would love, love to go to New York with Liam and Olivia. I think it would be amazing, like absolutely gorgeous, and also Canada. I'm not a really hot country person. I like the views and like mountains and yeah, I like to do things like I don't really like laying on a beach. Um and the last question, are you a morning person? Anyone that knows me will say no. Since I've had a baby, I may be, but I'm not I wouldn't say I'm a morning person. I'm just like I don't know, in between somewhere. I'm not up and I'm like Yay! Let's start the day! Woo! No, it's more... If I get up and I do something, like get up, get breakfast, sort Olivia out, then I feel more proactive because then I start hoovering and cleaning, you know, like, when I'm better. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the best of a morning person, let's be honest. Like, I could sleep if I needed to and if I wanted to. But I've got a baby, so there's no chance of that. So, yeah, that's all of the questions. Going back to the first question with the regrets, like I said, but moving forward, moving forward, I want to take something away from this illness, whatever, all of this crap that I'm having. When I get my results on Friday, I am going to be told if, I'm assuming, unless they find something else I'm going to be told what the next step is so the next step could be surgery which I really really don't want it could be surgery it could be just the fact of like draining it more antibiotics I really don't know and I'm just I'm just not going to think about it because it just brings me down I'm just going to be strong that's my new thing. I'm just going to be strong and I'm going to think if I can get through what I've got through so far with this infection, then I can continue getting through it, you know? Um, but moving forward, my mum has been badgering me saying that I need to start taking vitamins. I used to take vitamins. I used to take multivitamins, just one, and then I kind of just lost, not interest, but I just stopped. And... I don't know if it's there's any truth in it, I really don't, but ever since I've stopped, which is when I've got into this relationship and moved up here, when I moved, I've just been poorly, like quite a lot, so moving forward, I am going to be taking multivitamins and iron, calcium and vitamin D, selenium and vitamins A, C and E. So I'm either going to take these two, or I'm just going to take these multivitamins and I, because I think this has got everything in it. I'm just going to take these, because it's got everything in it. Yeah. So I'm going to be taking 
vitamins every single day and I'm just going to hope for the best because every time I have blood tests you've got a deficiency, you've got this, you've got that, the iron's low, all of that so I'm just going to take these blooming vitamins, it's one tablet a day I need to do it, I'm just going to add it to the rest of my tablets and I'm just going to look after myself a bit more and I'm not going to worry, like I just worry, 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 worry and when you worry you can be a bit of a mood hoover as Liam says so I don't want to hoover his mood <laughs> I don't want to hoover no one's mood up you know so I just want to look after myself a bit more take some more time for myself pamper myself I'm always worrying about what everyone else is doing what they're thinking I'm just gonna take some time for me especially going through this I've really learned how to be well how to appreciate things a bit more like I appreciate being able to walk it's crazy how we take advantage of just being able to get up and walk it's just crazy being able to go to the toilet by yourself and stuff it's just mad because I couldn't do all that I can't get a bath at the moment I have to stand up and do a strip wash I can't get a shower because well, I can get a shower but I can't get a bath and that's like a big thing for me I love my baths so yeah I'm just taking I'm going to take a lot out of this and really look after myself vitamins eating healthy and up here as well like up here not worrying and just thinking a little bit positive because I was so worried about this lump you've got no idea obviously this is just a video this is different to what it's like behind closed doors let's just say you know this is just a part of my life that I'm sharing there's things and there's you wouldn't you know you haven't seen you haven't seen me when I'm at my worst so everybody does that like you know everyone can sit in front of a camera and can put a bit of makeup on and be positive and then worry about something when they're not on camera because it's just natural so I have been really struggling like I've not been sleeping I've been constantly ringing my mum like she is my rock absolute rock I would I she's just been absolutely incredible she's always there for me as soon as I ring it's like boom hello are you okay <laughs> like she's always there for me she's amazing and I can't wait to when I get out of this I just want to like treat her with something I don't know what I just want to treat her and Liam because they've just been so incredible to me um but yeah I want to like I said I just want to look after myself a bit more take some time for me and try and enjoy life a bit more because I really took it for granted like I was just sort of sitting around all the time and now I've seen what it's like to have to rest for like nine months six seven eight months whatever it's been it's just like I miss being out I miss obviously this quarantine's going on but it's not like I'm used to being inside I'm just used to it because I've been so ill but I just miss sort of smiling and getting on with my life like it really does make you think I just kind of miss and I want to just be able to sit there on my phone and just you know like watch a program and not have anything else going on like not think right I've got an appointment on Friday or what could I do I might have to have this I might have to have that and stuff like that like I was so worried about it all and I was so worried about this lump and I am so appreciative that it's nothing serious serious um, and I'm, I literally prayed like I'm, I'm thanking God so much right now because I was so scared so moving forward we are going to have my results on Friday hopefully there's going to be a treatment that does not involve surgery <laughs> um, and let's just get better like on the road to recovery look after myself and hopefully this quarantine will be all over soon and we can come back to some just a bit more normality so let me know how you guys are getting on let me know what you're doing are you putting makeup on every day are you like are you like slobbing like what are you doing what makes you feel better during this time so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'm sorry to ramble but you know see you in another video bye